What's going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. So we're at this little bit of a lull period, you know, right after Kizuna Clash and, you know, tonight as of the recording of this video, we've got the debut of the Dofi Sugar and Moria Perona Sugar Fest with the new Pirate King Adventures game mode all dropping tonight. But I wanted to get a video out for you guys because I was just thinking about uh, the, the letter that we got given yesterday or the day before just talking about all of the new information in regards to what we can expect heading into the 10th anniversary. Anniversary. And then it got me thinking, what are they even going to do for the 10th anniversary? And I know that I've been talking to a couple of people in the community about this over the past, you know, month or so, and people are like making theories and ideas as to what they think, you know, the anniversary is going to be. And I have my own theory as to what it's going to be as well, and we're going to discuss it all in this video today. So, of course, in this news post, they talk about the 10th anniversary is coming up, uh, and they have, you know, a variety of characters, updates, and campaigns. We'll have to wait and see. And, of course, we've got the co-op quest and the Grand Feast Sugo Fest, and we don't really have a lot of details in regards to what this could even mean yet, but it's just interesting to say the least. So... What I wanted to do is kind of just go through all of the anniversaries that we've had thus far and to kind of get a, get a bit of a information, a little bit of perspective as to what we can kind of expect, judging from what we've had over the history of One Piece Treasure Cruise. Now, the anniversaries that I'm going to go through are just the Japanese anniversaries. Global anniversaries, for the most part, were very different because we had like a different schedule and characters released at different times. So you can't really go off of the history of the global anniversary or the Korean anniversary because it is vastly different. So the first anniversary was actually Log Luffy on Japan, and Log Luffy was like a game changer, he was like the most broken legend up until, mm, it took a while for him to actually get power crept, but for a very long time he was widely considered to be the best, just a rainbow unit that just did lots of damage, great captain effect, special wasn't great, but the captain effect was the main thing, because multipliers were very very low during that first anniversary period. We move on to the second anniversary, and uh, on Japan, interestingly enough, Trafalgar Law version 1 was the anniversary unit. So I thought this was kind of weird, because you would think that, you know, they were going to really try and hone in on the fact that, you know, Luffy's the main character, everyone loves Luffy, right? He, you'd think that he would be the headliner unit, but no, they decided for Trafalgar Law to be this unit on Japan. So that was a bit of a, of a difference, a little bit of change of pace. However, moving on to the third anniversary, they decided to also make the headliner unit. Technically, the headliner unit was version 1 Legend Sanji. However, what they had done here is that they had super evolved Time Skip Luffy into Gear 4 Luffy. And this was around the time, you know, obviously during the end of Dressrosa period where Gear 4 was, uh, was obviously at the prime of his popularity. And getting Time Skip Luffy super evolved into Gear 4 Luffy and the fact that Gear 4 Luffy was actually guaranteed on the Sugo Fest. I think he only had to do like six multis and you got the Luffy guaranteed. Now, albeit back during the third anniversary, getting six multis as a free-to-play player was actually way more difficult than it, in, than it is today. You actually get a lot more gems in today's day and age compared to what it was back then, but still getting the Luffy guaranteed was pretty big back then. Moving on to the fourth anniversary, this was also a big release with the release of a brand new Legend Luffy, and the Legend Nami for the first time. This is the first Legend Nami in the game. This Luffy, though, we're going to go back to him as well because he introduced some very unique mechanics that made him really interesting. And the fact that, you know, he was a really good kind of like a rainbow-ish captain. Great special ability. Very fun captain ability as well. So this was a really good release. Lots of people were pumped about this one. You move on to the year after that on Japan. Luffy and Law dual unit. And then the dual Big Mom character. Obviously, dual Big Mom wasn't really a fan favorite. But Luffy, Law and release, dude, everyone was going ballistic. How broken this character was. A switch effect to make him go through defensive effects. A 2 0.5 all boost like all boosts weren't really exceeding two times a lot of the time back when this guy came out and then they brought out this 2.5 times all boosting character and then you've got this really cool captain ability as well that was also rainbow centric so Trafalgar Law and Monkey D. Luffy released dual unit Whew, people were loving that one during the fifth anniversary the sixth anniversary was when super types were introduced for the first time so, of course, this brought along four Sugo Fest exclusives in Blackbeard and Katakuri for the Int Super Types, and then Sabo and Luffy for the Strength Super Types. So, this is obviously going to be a big one, too. Uh, and this was massive as well. Everyone wanted all of these units. They all seemed really busted. Lots of people loved all of these units. Luffy, of course, 
even though he was strength centric he still ca was kind of capable of providing really good buffs to all characters despite the fact that strength was kind of like what you wanted to go for but this was a really big sugo fest too Moving on to the 7th anniversary, Final Tap was introduced, or Last Tap was introduced for the first time, bringing along the Supernovas, Luffy, Law, and Kid, all of them being super types, all of which having Final Taps, and we now know by this point that Law and Luffy have super evolutions, as we know. Kid doesn't have one yet, so it'd be interesting to see if they opt to give him one in the future. I'm sure he will get one. He's probably the next Super Sugo in line to probably receive one. We'll wait and see, of course, but yeah, this is a pretty big banner as well. Uh, and remember when this came out on Global, this is during the time period where we're kind of transitioning into the merge period. So it was kind of strange for Global players, but I know that for Japan players on release, all of these characters seemed super absurd, very, very strong characters. So that's obviously very big. We move on to the 8th anniversary, where we had the introduction of Super Tandem. So you got Luffy... You got Ace and Yamato, and then you've got the Super Tandem Kaido. They also introduced the anniversary exclusive Hancock Nami Robin character for the first time. Anniversary exclusive characters. All three of these characters were insanely good on release, of course. I mean, obviously, all of these characters are going to be really good on release, no doubt. But these characters are super good. I mean, you don't see these characters used too much these days. Luffy does still have uses because his super tandem is very strong with great synergy with Straw Hats. Kaido has been power crept a lot. They just keep re-releasing different Kaidos that are just kind of just better. So unfortunately, you don't see too much of him, but on release was one of the best units in the game for a very long time. And then Ace and Yamato does still see niche usages. Definitely very good for Grand Voyage. Great captain ability to get around bind and special bind. Really strong switch effect great special so ace yamato definitely holds up still we move on to last year's anniversary now this was a bit of a weird one uh a lot of people really dislike this one with luffy yamato and then odin and toki were like the subsidiary character debuting alongside them now remember that this was the structure where they introduced luffy during part one of the anniversary then part two they introduced sanji and queen and then part three they brought zoro and alba so they definitely you know made up for it in parts two and three because everyone wanted the Ifrit, Sanji, uh, King of Hell, Zoro, and stuff. People wanted those units. We did get them. We just didn't get them on initial release. So we had the introduction of Luffy Yamato. On release, they were kind of strong. They were very good against the content at hand. But once the content had kind of subsided, Luffy Yamato really never saw that much play. Once again, they just introduced better versions of Luffy, better versions of Yamato. So unfortunately, these characters don't really see as much play. It's a little weird because honestly, I think that Super Tandem Luffy still sees more play than Luffy Yamato. And a very finicky character to actually use. So it gives us now to the point where what are they going to do for Global's anniversary, or I say Global's anniversary, but for Treasure Crew's anniversary for the 10th one. So in my opinion, as, as according to my thumbnail that I've just uh, put on this video, this is what I would think would be kind of cool. And look, I get that they can definitely go down the route of egghead related stuff and, you know, really give us a hype celebration in regards to latest anime information latest anime episodes but i honestly think that it would be a really cool idea to give us like a special edition character that is specifically for you know treasure crews not relating to anime episodes or anything but this is a big celebration right the 10th anniversary of this game i think it would be interesting if they re-explored the gear change mechanic that luffy has been shown uh, to do obviously as he we have from gear 2 to gear 3 gear 4 and gear 5 we did talk about it a little bit previously with this uh, this Luffy here during the 4th anniversary. I've got him up on the database for those of you guys who don't remember exactly how this character worked. Basically, you would start off as like a base gear 2nd Luffy, uh, and then uh, you could actually transform him into gear 3, and you have slightly differing effects along the way. And then you could also transform into Gear 4 Luffy, uh, and then eventually you could turn into Tank Man Luffy, depending on how many recovery slots you had consumed before launching the character special. So I think that's kind of interesting, where you have, you know, these Gear 2, Gear 3 effects, which are, you know, different versions of each other, depending on the situation, it's actually better to have Gear 2nd versus Gear 3rd, or vice versa. And then when you activate the special ability, or you have enough of your gear gauge ready to go you could transform him into the higher state into gear four and then when you have consumed those slots you would get tank man instead 
and then of course the special ability was was really really strong so i think it would be interesting if we had a character such as this that could activate all of these abilities transform and then eventually once you have reached a certain gauge you can get your gear four uh, you can get your gear five and obviously when you reach a gear five status luffy becomes insanely busted now i think that would be cool but at the same time treasure cruise has a knack of making character gimmicks that are very finicky usually very bad to use you know case in point ninth anniversary luffy yamato on paper when you read their abilities it they sound insanely busted but in practice when you actually use them it's so annoying to use that it, it more often than not you're just better using something else so if, even if they did something like this which i think would be kind of cool and would fit well with the 10th anniversary you know, a decade long with this game to introduce a Luffy dedicated to all of his different gear changing mechanics. I think that would be insanely cool. But at the same time, it would get me a bit concerned as to how they would actually implement something like that without making it terrible. It would still have to be very strong and reaching these different gear stages. I understand you would have to perform certain actions in the game to get that. But as long as it's not too finicky, they could definitely make it work right so you know i think that would be really really cool but they could also go down another route like potentially what if they just release new versions of luffy and the straw hats because you know, the straw hats are the main characters they're insanely popular units and potentially instead of just giving you know dedicated straw hats individual legends if they actually went down the route of giving us new versions of these luffy straw hat units i could definitely see that be the case as well i mean this luffy and the straw hats this unit still will see play if you can fit this on like a super boss team it, like literally any team you can fit this on this character is definitely worth running because of that final tap alone just giving you insane damage like you don't you can just do 50 percent of the enemy's health this final tap just does the rest for you it's crazy right the only real issue is is that when this character is on your crew it fulfills the roles for every single straw hat unit so you can't have any straw hat supports you can't run any other additional straw hats alongside them so that's the real drawback for these units so you would hope that if they do something like this that the character would have to be very very strong and obviously this luffy and the straw hats on release was definitely very very strong but i mean i they definitely just cannot release a luffy character and that's just kind of it they definitely have to release something else alongside it now they could definitely go down the egghead route of releasing current anime related stuff however because of the theming and it being the 10th anniversary i don't see them doing that all that much unless if we were literally at the peak climax of the arc which we're currently not in the anime right now so if we just look at the popularity poll, which I think is a pretty safe thing to do because, you know, these are the most popular characters in the game, in, in One Piece in general, right? This is the latest popularity poll, the global one. It was a couple years ago at this point, so I'm sure these would probably change now. But if you just look at the characters that are super popular, all of the Straw Hats are near the top. You have Trafalgar Law as well, and I respect that. I don't know if they would do another Trafalgar Law for the anniversary, but I think a characters that haven't received Legends... Uh, during a certain time period that could actually fit really well with this theming, it honestly would be Ace and Sabo. So I could definitely see them doing uh, a new Monkey D. Luffy with gear change, a new Ace and a new Sabo. I'd be pretty down with that. I think that would be pretty hype. But also Boa Hancock, she got one recently, so I don't think so. Carrot, I I would be shocked if Carrot is, an, is, a, is the 10th anniversary legend. I would be absolutely flawed if that was the case if you look a little deeper though yamato she's already got a lot of representation i hope that's not the case shanks is probably going to get a legend this year i don't know if it'd be for anniversary corazon is surprising katakuri my boy mr slam jam would love to see him get a legend but i just don't think it would fit for 10th anniversary Usopp, of course, Chopper, Crocodile, obviously with Cross Skill just got one, Jinbei part of the Straw Hats, Marco is interesting that he's here, and Doflamingo as well would be interesting, but he's getting one with Sugar debuting tonight as of the recording of this video. So honestly, if we're looking at this, I feel like they're going to pick popular characters, whether it be anime current centric stuff, or it's going to be Straw Hat focused, they could add Trafalgar Law, some of the Supernovas, but I think Ace and Sabo is a pretty good bet as well. But that's just all of my opinions. Let me know your thoughts and opinions about all this, guys, down below in the comment section. What are you expecting them to do for the 10th anniversary of One Piece Treasure Cruise? I hope you enjoyed it, though. If you enjoyed the video, make sure you go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all the content I post, including more One Piece Treasure cruise content make sure to hit the subscribe button down below and that guys i'll see you guys within the next video